Hey guys, so I just wrapped up the PlayStation Showcase. I streamed it over on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash EPN, and we had lots of people come and join me, which was really cool. I love doing that. So if we're ever doing any live streams, come on over to Twitch and follow along. It's a lot of fun to chat with you guys as these big events happen. I think one of the things with this PlayStation Showcase, though, is that the hype was too big. We were expecting maybe a little bit too much. There was no Wolverine. We didn't get anything from Sony Bend. We didn't get anything from the Sucker Punch team or Sony Santa Monica or even Naughty Dog. But I do have a list of my 10 favorite things from the showcase. And I have to also tip my hat to the cool indies that were seen there. We had Ultras, which looks like this super hyper colorful version of Dead Cells. A really cool look to that experience. Neva, which is made by some of the people that were involved with Gree, has this hand painted super emotional style to it. It kind of brought us down a little bit when the critter died in the trailer. It was like, what? It was like a Bambi moment, I think somebody said. There's also the Talus Principle 2, which looks super sleek and very cool. Lots of awesome giant human statues and all kinds of puzzles that we'll have to figure out. I'm looking forward to that one. And there were a couple of ubiquitous cat games on display. There was also a little mini PSVR 2 showcase within the showcase. And I have to say that was a little disappointing. There wasn't anything that evoked that same level of awe that we got from Horizon Call of the Mountain and the way that they launched the PlayStation VR 2, except for the fact that we got a taste of Resident Evil 4 in VR and that looks freaking fantastic. I can't wait to play that. I can't wait to find out more about that. But yes, I was expecting more from the PlayStation VR 2. And we also had a couple of new trailers for games that are just about to launch. Street Fighter 6, which is massive and beautiful. And you could say the same thing about Final Fantasy 16, which had another gorgeous trailer for us to sink our eyeballs into. Can't wait to play that game and come back and review it for you guys. But here are 10 of my favorite things from the 2023 PlayStation Showcase. I'm going to start with the announcement of Project Q, which Jim Ryan showed off. It is a handheld device that's going to work with the PlayStation 5. He was very, very upfront about the fact that it's a streaming device. It's not a true blue PlayStation portable that you can take out anywhere. I am hoping that there's still some room to kind of change things around a little bit and put a little bit of onboard storage into this device. I mean, it's going to be cool to be able to be on a Wi-Fi signal and play with what looks like DualSense controllers on this handheld anywhere, as long as you've got Wi-Fi, but I think it would just be so much better if there was onboard storage so you could play locally wherever you happen to be, on a plane, anywhere. I think it's time for Sony to get back in the handheld race for real. And this looks like a step in that direction, but not enough of a step. But we'll see. Plans could change. Things could change. That might end up being a pretty kick-ass handheld. Number nine on my list is the reveal of Marathon. This is from Bungie, and Sony owns Bungie now, so it's pretty fascinating that they're going back to Bungie's roots and revitalizing a brand of robots shooting robots. I played Marathon on the Mac because Bungie, believe it or not, was a Mac game developer first before Microsoft started to partner with them and acquired them and put out Halo on the Xbox. But Marathon was cool. I remember digging the kind of trippy art style to it and the ambition and the imagination of the game. Looking forward to this reinvention. Have no idea what this new Marathon is going to be about, if it's going to be another live service type of experience like Destiny. And they also did show off a little bit more of what's coming next for Destiny, as well as reveal, it's called the Final Shape. Also reveal the fact that there's going to be a Destiny event in August to kind of showcase where we're going with Destiny 2. But it does feel like Destiny 2 is kind of winding down a little bit and so maybe a Destiny 3 is on the horizon. Number 8 for me is Immortals of Avium which is coming out this summer and it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. It's like a magic shooter with beautiful special effects and all kinds of kick-ass powers and it's a single player experience so can't wait to play that one. Number 7 was our look at Phantom Blade Zero which has some incredibly cool character designs, lots of gorgeous environmental visuals, lots of cool special effects and flourishes. It's got a moody from soft Software-esque feel to it, a little Team Ninja in there. People in the chat were saying it kind of reminds them of Ninja Gaiden. All of that is great 
kind of fodder, great material to pull from. The game looks cool. I'm looking forward to playing Phantom Blade. Another sweet looking game is Helldivers 2, which definitely looks like it's been borrowing from the Destiny franchise, like lots and lots of games have, but also from Starship Troopers, you're going hunting after big bugs. The trailer was great. They had a very slick photo reel opening with unbelievably well-made facial animation on the characters that they had. I don't know if that's going to be in-game stuff or it was made just to market everything here, but it was very slick. The gameplay looks fun. You're going to be teaming up and chasing down these giant space bugs. you got to kill them all. A very nice surprise was Dragon's Dogma 2. This is a Capcom magic-infused role-playing game with lots of great character designs, and it looks like it's going to be action-packed with lots of cool abilities and lots of incredible visual flourishes and stuff. Now, in the shadow of the epic kind of scale of Final Fantasy 16, it maybe doesn't hit quite as hard, but it still is really cool to see Capcom moving from a lot of their Resident Evil and Street Fighter, their big money makers, the Monster Hunters, and making a kind of a more traditional action role-playing experience like this. Dragon's Dogma 2 looks very sweet. Can't wait to play that one. Number four on my list is actually an indie game. Devolver is publishing it. It's called The Plucky Squire, and it looks cool, man. It's evoking some of that transforming dimensions gameplay that we saw in A Link Between Worlds, that Zelda game for the 3DS. In this one, you've got these cool cartoony visuals and also these awesome 3D visuals, and you're going in and out of different states in the game. And it looks like it's going to be filled with interesting imagination for you to solve the puzzles and to continue along in the adventure. And I just love the aesthetic on this. I just thought it looked killer. And Devolver's got such great pedigree. They know how to pick winners. And I think the Plucky Squire is going to be exactly that. Number three for me was all that cool Metal Gear Solid news. We've got Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater being remade. I don't know the exact specifics of when we'll get that. But there's also the Master Collection, the sort of up versions of the classic Metal Gear Solid games coming to PlayStation 5 this fall and that's just fantastic keeping these incredible games this incredible franchise accessible for people and maybe it's going to be a new experience for a lot of people I can't wait to play all of these Metal Gear games again I do think it's weird that we're not remaking Metal Gear 1 yet and I guess that's the idea here is we'll see how the Metal Gear Solid 3 remake does and how the Master Collection does and then I think Konami is going to invest in remaking all of those classic ones and probably we're getting new Metal Gears soon ish. Number two on my list is Remedy's fantastic look at Alan Wake 2. That was jaw-dropping. Beautiful visuals. The engine tech that they're using over there is really stellar. Lots of great character designs and moody lighting, and of course, and it just feels like a psychological trip. I think this is going to be awesome. Also love the Sam Lake cameo that we got in the trailer. I thought that looked great, and it's coming out this October. I think that's going to be a fantastic Halloween spooky treat. Can't wait for Alan Wake 2, but the sequel that I'm most excited for is also number one on my list, and it was the thing that I was really hoping was going to be at the showcase. I think we all knew it would be. It's Marvel's Spider-Man 2, which allows us to jump between Miles Morales and Peter Parker and assume the different personalities and the different powers of each of these Spider-Men, but Peter Parker has had a Venom infection happen to him, and he's turned, and Yuri Lowenthal's voice as Peter Parker has gotten a lot more gruff and menacing. And they're being hunted by Craven the Hunter, and there's also the Lizard as a part of this experience. And we're getting a sense that we're going to be traveling across more of the boroughs in New York City. And so the game is opening up in some really cool ways. We even saw Spider-Man underwater getting chased by the Lizard and doing all of this cool combat and getting into conflict with sea dudes and boats and drones and stuff over the water. The game looks incredible, and it really felt like we got a nice taste of the experience. That was a great look at what Spider-Man 2 is going to deliver. I think it's going to be one of the best of the year. I'll be shocked if it's not in contention and in the conversation for 2023's Game of the Year. I thought it was an okay showcase overall. I was a bit underwhelmed, I do have to say, because the hype is real. In the past, Sony's summer kind of showcases and reveals have been magnificent. They've really hit some high highs. We can all remember the God of War reveal back in the day. And I think every time one of these things comes up, there is just this massive wave of expectation. And I don't think this one delivered on all fronts, but there was certainly a lot of fun stuff to dive into. But let me know what you think. What do you think of PlayStation's 2023 showcase? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll be back with some new content for you very soon. And until then, play forever.